I watered my plants with pasta water versus rice water, and the winner, well, honestly, it blew my mind. Stop pouring that liquid gold down the drain, because what's left in your pot after cooking might just be the secret weapon your garden has been begging for. Today on Soil and Crop Central, we're diving into a showdown that has sparked endless debates, surprising experiments, and some jaw-dropping plant transformations. Pasta water versus rice water. Two humble kitchen leftovers that turned my garden into a living experiment, and the results were nothing short of stunning. The Kitchen Garden Dilemma. What's really hiding in these liquids? You know, this isn't just another gardening hack floating around the internet. For years, gardeners have split into two camps, those who swear by the starchy richness of pasta water and those who champion the nutrient-dense power of rice water. Both get tossed out in kitchens every day, yet each carries unique compounds that can shift soil health, energize microbes, and even boost plant growth. So instead of just taking the myths at face value, I put them to the test not only to see which one works better, but to understand why they work in the first place. Pasta Power, the starchy secret weapon beneath the surface. When we talk about pasta water, we're talking about more than just cloudy liquid. As pasta cooks, it releases starch molecules into the water along with trace minerals such as magnesium, phosphorus, calcium, and iron. These compounds aren't fertilizer in the traditional sense, but they create an environment that really supercharges soil structure and microbial activity. The starch acts like a mild carbohydrate feed for beneficial microbes, helping them break down organic matter more effectively. When I watered my test plants with cooled, unsalted pasta water, one cup of pasta water diluted in two cups of plain water to maintain a gentle balance, I noticed the soil staying more aerated and retaining moisture more efficiently. Plants that typically lagged in growth began showing fuller leaves and stronger stems, not because pasta water directly feeds them, but because it improves the habitat they grow in. What surprised me most were the visible changes over just two weeks. The plants treated with pasta water had richer, deeper green foliage, and the new leaves unfurled faster than the control group. Some gardeners fear that pasta water may create a sticky residue or attract pests, but when diluted and cooled properly, this simply doesn't happen. Instead, it becomes a subtle boost to soil vitality that compounds over time. Rice's rain nutrient elixir or just another trend? Rice water enters the conversation with a different kind of promise. When rice grains are rinsed or soaked, they shed nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and amino acids. Nutrients that plants need for growth, root expansion, and vigor. Fermented rice water holds beneficial enzymes and microbial life that can help prime roots for faster nutrient absorption. For my experiment, I used two versions. The first was plain rice water, half a cup of rice rinsed in two cups of water, then strained and diluted with another two cups of clean water before use. The second was a lightly fermented version allowed to sit for 48 hours until it developed a mild, tangy smell, indicating active fermentation. The results were striking. The plants treated with fermented rice water showed noticeably accelerated root growth during repotting checks. Seedlings irrigated with rice water sprouted more uniformly and with greater vigor, especially leafy greens. The natural NPK presence acted like a gentle fertilizer, pushing growth without overwhelming the plants. However, the key was balance. Too strong a concentration or over-fermentation caused slight yellowing in one batch, proving that rice water's strength requires moderation. The Ultimate Garden Showdown. Which one truly wins? 
putting pasta water and rice water head-to-head -head produced one of the most fascinating comparisons I've done on Soil and Crops Central. The pasta water plants exhibited robust stems, better moisture retention, and healthier microbial activity in the soil. The rice water plants, on the other hand, showed exceptional root development, faster sprouting, and more vibrant leaf growth. Visually, the rice water group looked fuller, while the pasta water group looked sturdier. In controlled tests using two sets of the same plant species grown under identical conditions, the rice water batch began outpacing the pasta water batch within the first 10 days. But by week four, pasta water plants caught up in structural strength and leaf quality. Here's where the nuances appeared. Flowering plants responded better to pasta water because of the improved soil conditioning. Leafy greens, herbs, and seedlings responded more enthusiastically to rice water due to its gentle nutrient content. So the winner isn't one or the other, it's the one that fits the specific plant's stage and need. Beyond the hype, here's how to maximize these liquids in your garden. What became clear through testing is that both pasta water and rice water deserve a place in a sustainable gardening routine, especially if you're committed to reducing waste and boosting soil health naturally. Pasta water works best when used once a week to support microbial ecosystems and maintain healthy soil texture. Rice water, especially when diluted and used no more than twice a week, supports growth spurts, seedling development, and overall plant energy. The real secret lies in alternating them. Pasta water builds the foundation, rice water fuels the growth, and when combined with compost, organic matter, or natural fertilizers, they become part of a powerful, low-cost, eco-friendly gardening system. Soil health is ultimately the engine that drives plant performance, and these liquids act like gentle tune-ups that keep that engine running smoothly. Whether you're nurturing houseplants, maintaining raised beds, or growing a small balcony garden, experimenting with these kitchen byproducts can transform your plants in ways that genuinely surprised me. The results weren't just visible, they were undeniable. If you found this experiment insightful and want more in-depth, science-backed gardening breakthroughs, don't forget to subscribe to Soil and Crops Central and share this video with a fellow gardener. Your garden and your kitchen have more power than you think.